Philip Whalen was born in 1929 in Portland, Oregon. Early on, Whalen had an interest in writing and wrote for literary magazines by the time he was in high school. During this time, he also grew an increasing interest in Asian literature and philosophy, a reoccurring theme in his whoa, life. Whoa, whoa, stop the tape. Stop the tape. I can't do this. What do you mean, stop the tape? We just started, and we even came out to the classroom where we have class two days a week to do this. Look, this is boring. You know I don't like poetry, and honestly, I just don't have that much respect for Philip Whalen. Okay, man, look, I understand where your bitterness towards Whalen's coming from. To be honest, I don't like poetry that much either. But come on, give him credit. You know Whalen's a really cool guy. Oh, really? You think so? Yeah, I do. And I'm going to show you how, okay? Just roll the tape. You see, at the age of 20, Whalen was drafted into the Army Air Corps. He was forced to serve his country during the Second World War. You would think that the fact that he was drafted here in World War II at such a young age, that the draft would have stopped out the poet part of his lifestyle. Well, one might think so, but it didn't at all. In fact, because he was stationed stateside teaching radio operation, he used just about all of his downtime to advance his writings and thoughts. During the year 1946, Whalen was discharged from the Army Air Corps, and he used the GI Bill to attend Reed College in Portland, Oregon. While participating in his studies, Whalen became determined to be a great poet, and then during the year 1950, William Carlos Williams, a famous poet, visited Reed College and encouraged Whalen to never stop writing. He also met and became friends with Lou Welch and Gary Snyder, other inspirational poets. So what? I'm supposed to think Whalen is special because he had college buddies who were just like him. I mean, come on, me and you are friends, we're college buddies, and we're just alike. So what's that supposed to mean? I mean, sure, we're college buddies and all, but the last time I checked, we haven't gained national praise for subtle intelligence, compassion for nature, and a spiritual reality, as these three did. True, okay, I'll agree with you on that. You know what I'm saying, Cody? I mean, these guys are around our age, and they were being recognized for creating a new style of writing in the California Fremont. Oh, okay. In 1955, he moved to San Francisco and helped shape the West Coast in the Beat Movement. In fact, he was one of the poets featured in the historic Six Gallery readings on October 13, 1955. Whalen also met and befriended other Beat poets while in San Francisco, and with his new friends, he helped inspire the San Francisco Renaissance. So, did Whalen know any of the famous Beat poets like Jack Kerouac, Neil Cassidy, Allen Ginsberg, or Gregory Corso? Actually, he knew them all, and he shared their same interests, and he was similar in many ways. And you know what? He even experimented with peyote with them to draw inspiration for some of his works. So you mean to tell me that Whalen used a drug called peyote, mm -hmm. a drug used for hallucinating nonetheless? Well, that makes him such a great role model for the people. Okay, but understand something, man. Things were a lot different back then. He didn't use them for pure pleasure. Quite a bit of it was about inspiration. And might I add, I'm wearing a Dallas Cowboy shirt. I know you're an NFL fan. Sure. Who are we to judge role models? Oh, that's a valid statement. And Whalen did not stop moving forward in life. In 1973, he followed his studies of Asian philosophy and became an ordained Zen Buddhist monk. He spent time in Zen centers in New Mexico and California. Yes, he finally realized poetry is no way to make a living. Uh, guess again, bud. Not only did he keep on writing while he was a monk, he kept winning awards. In fact, in 1985, he received the Morton Duan Zabal Award for his demonstrations of original, progressive, and experimental tendencies in his works. Why don't you read this poem for us? Hymnus ad patrim sinensis by Philip Whalen. I praise those ancient Chinamen who left me a few words. Usually a pointless joke or a silly question. A line of poetry drunkenly scrawled on the margin of the cliff. Splash picture. A bug, a leaf. Caricature of teacher on paper held together now by little more than you, and their own strength burst momentarily over it. Their world and several other sense gone to hell in a handbasket they knew it. Cheered as it is, whisked by and conked out among the bust of spring rain, cherry blossom, wine jars, happy to have saved us all. Very good. You see, Philip Whalen had tremendous influence on the West Coast beat and just writing in general. And he's not done either, is he? I mean, Paul Christensen, a critic, stated his poetry can be found anywhere in one's immediately daily life and thoughts. 
and they can be found there day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and decade after decade. Exactly. You see, his works will continue to inspire, and they're going to prove to be more and more prevalent as time goes on. If the other beat writers are correct in their predictions, Waylon is going to be a household name long after you and I have left this world. I guess, I guess those of us who are anti-poetry are going to need to accept it. But there it is, my friend. You know what? I still have a distaste for poetry, but honestly, Philip Waylon was a pretty cool dude. No doubt, brother. So, let's take our books, open it up, and let's read Philip Waylon. Because he's not going away anytime soon, and we need to wise up. Alrighty, let's get started. <laughs>